these are just some of the pills that I have to take throughout the day. Ah, life as a cancer patient, so much fun. Well, hi everyone. Yeah, you saw uh, those drugs. Uh, that's my part of my daily routine in regards to drugs, uh, quite a few. I also have another pill box, actually two more pill boxes upstairs in my bedroom. One is for the chemos that I take at bedtime, and one is for some drugs I take in the morning, uh, my standard drugs that I've always taken, which are for GERD and uh, my thyroid uh, issues. So lots and lots of pills that I take throughout the day, try to spread them out throughout the day so I'm not taking a ton of pills all at once makes life interesting. I have alarms that go off every couple of hours reminding me which drugs that I need to take at certain times. So it's quite an experience. I counted, I think there's about 17 different uh, drugs that I'm currently taking uh, at this point. And then there's also additional drugs that I can take as needed, such as pain medications or anti-nausea medications that if I need them, I can take those too. So uh, it's, it's a lot of drugs, fills me up. Not very nutritious though. I <laughs> uh, wanted to give you a quick update first on the trial uh, that I've started. So those of you that know, I started a trial a little over two weeks ago. The trial is uh, consisting of two different chemos. Um, the first one is called cabozantin, cabozantinib. And then the second one is temozolomide. And what they're doing is combining these two chemos together uh, in hopes that with them working together, they will target different areas uh, of tumors in order to knock them off balance and, and uh, either kill them, shrink them, whatever, get, get rid of them. Um, and obviously that's the goal. For a while, I was in a lot of pain, especially at night, uh, excruciating pain, the type of pain that normally may have taken me into the ER and actually did take me into the ER a couple of times. Very excruciating, doubled over type pains, all different though. At first, I was attributing at least some of the pain to uh, the chemo because it seemed to start right when I started taking the chemo. However, we soon seem to learn that it's probably uh, more than likely caused by tumors that <clears throat> were pressing on different things. And the reason we say that is because I was working with palliative care to kind of control those pains. Nothing seemed to really work. <clears throat> they just needed to kind of work themselves out throughout the night. And then during the day, I was feeling uh, much better. So the pains tended to happen at night. I just had a two-week checkup, a first two-week checkup for the trial uh, on Friday, and uh, the pains are, for the most part, gone. I'm not having issues with them. I'm not having to take pain medication at night uh, as much, and um, so both my palliative care doctor and my oncologist uh, both seem to think that those pains were actually caused by tumors and that the hope is that this new trial is actually doing some good work by shrinking those tumors, which is causing me less pain. So that's the hope. We're hoping that's gonna that's the case. We will know for sure uh, in April uh, when I have my next scans. And uh, as luck have it, I will get the results of those scans on my birthday. So I think that's a good omen. Um, that this trial is actually working and shrinking and maybe even getting rid of some of these tumors and uh, which is causing me less pain and that's all I can hope for right now. We'd love to be able to just feel good and, uh, and, and go on with life. So that's the, the trial update. We obviously will update you more again in a few weeks once I have those scans and uh, we'll let you know what uh, the results are. But um, in other news, obviously, you are all aware of what's going on in the world today. Uh, we are kind of 
self-containing ourselves here uh, at home due to the coronavirus. Uh, not that we need to, and Tony and I are not sick, uh, and we hope to keep it that way. Uh, my mother is not sick. She will be coming over this evening. Uh, we always get together on Sunday evenings for dinner, and uh, we have decided we're going to do some fun and build a puzzle. We're actually going to put our electronics down, our iPads and our iPhones, and stop reading news about the coronavirus, and we're actually going to do a puzzle. I don't like puzzles, but it's something to do. <laughs> it's something different uh, for us to do. So we're gonna try to normalize or keep things as normal as possible. Uh, and uh, even though we're obviously taking precautions, uh, you've seen pictures of me on Instagram, if you follow me there with uh, my mask on. So if I do have to go downtown and ride public transportation, I do have the mask that is a certified mask to protect me. Um, most medical masks, as you may know, really do not protect the person from disease. This particular mask does. Uh, and um, so I wear that when I'm riding the train going downtown um, uh, or in an Uber or whatever. Uh, I also sensible, I carry a bottle of Purell with me, probably need to lock that to my body because I'm afraid people will steal it. <laughs> But uh, I carry that with me. I get on the train. I purel my hands. I get off the train. I purel my hands. I'm washing my hands once I get to a bathroom. I, again, these are things I was doing anyway before this coronavirus started. I bought the mask beforehand uh, because the flu was so bad around here that I didn't want to catch the flu or get any kind of sickness at all. So, um, uh, yeah, that's that's where we are. So we're protecting ourselves not going too crazy and doing what we need to do uh, to stay healthy. Okay, so I also wanted to do something different this time. You've heard me talk about Tony, you've seen him wave in the background, but, but uh, you've never talked to him. So I wanted you all to, to meet Tony. This is obviously Hello. my husband, who is my main caregiver. And uh, I thought it would be cool for you to get his take on things, what it's like to be my caregiver. I get asked all the time how I'm doing. I'm not suffering cancer, so I get all my cues from Dave. When he's doing well, I'm doing very well. When he's in bad shape, and he has a couple of times, like when he was on oxygen, um, that really affects me, but mostly I get my, my uh, happiness or sadness from how Dave's doing. <laughs> I try not to make him sad, <laughs> but he's got a tough job. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people give caregivers enough credit because they have to put up with a lot of our shit and they have to understand our shit. And sometimes that could be very difficult, I'm sure, because sometimes we don't understand our shit. So. You, you may have heard the word hangry. When I get hungry, I get low blood sugar, I get angry, and that's called hangry, and I can't tolerate what I consider stupidity, which is anything when I'm hangry. Um, Dave, apparently, during chemo, gets um, the same kind of impatience. It's not based on hunger, but he does get, um, I call it grouchy, <laughs> but it's not all the time. It's very infrequent. So how do you deal, like, um, you know, I was talking a bit about the pain I've been in at night sometimes. And, yeah. and so, you know, I'm obviously waking you up and in pain. How do you, I mean, what goes through your mind? I mean, what are you thinking when I'm <laughs> screaming and whatever? Mostly pity. Uh, pity? I, yeah, I feel bad for you. Um, I, I want you to not be in pain, but I know that's not possible. You treat your pain as you can. Um, I've learned over the past two years that w which screams mean you need help and which screams just mean you're grouchy. <laughs> you can't sleep. Uh, so I, I fall asleep pretty easily when I know you're not really in trouble. When, when something unusual happens, I do get fully awake and I prepare to bring you to the hospital and that's very rare. And as a, as a, a, a patient, I think that's 
one of the things that at least I look for or, or expect. I want, he always says it's up to me what I want to do, which obviously it is, if, um, but, but if I'm in a lot, a lot of pain and feeling like, you know, maybe my brain isn't being rational, uh, I want him to throw ideas at me so that I can make those decisions. For example, the last time we did go to the ER, he wanted to drive me just simply because it's, the hospital is not that far from here, but I decided I wanted to go in the, the ambulance because I was in such pain. And um, uh, I also knew that if, I, if we took the ambulance, I would get into a, a room sooner than, than having to wait out in the lobby. And I figured that it was probably gonna be quite busy because at the time, again, the flu was just rampant and, and uh, I just figured it would be busy, so. And we even um, had people that came with the ambulance. They said, look, you have cancer. You, you, you will have situations where you need the hospital. Call the ambulance. Yeah, they, they're just call us no matter what. They might not, it might even be a case where they don't take me into the hospital, but they, they would rather have us call them than, you know, something happening in Tony's car on the way to the hospital or something like that. And, um, or something happening to me in the car, which, you know, you never know. And we don't know what the pain is a lot of the time. So when it feels like something is about to rupture, um, uh, I think I'd rather be in an ambulance than in a car. But That's the concern. If there's a brand new pain, he's never felt it before. It's in a, pain, a place that's never hurt before. Um, if he's screaming at pain level 10, then it could be something has happened inside of him that needs immediate treatment. Like um, if he didn't have cancer, it could be uh, appendix bursting or something like that. Which luckily I wouldn't because I don't have an appendix anymore, <laughs> which I have to always explain to the ambulance people because if I have a pain in my lower right side, I'm like, but I don't have an appendix. So, uh, so the other thing was I wanted to ask if you have advice or could give advice or just words of wisdom or whatever to other caregivers that based on what I've based learned. on what you've learned I mean obviously every person is different and every you know the needs of the person are going to be different but there's commonality and stuff and you might have words of wisdom it hasn't gotten so bad where I've had to stay home and care for him I'm, I continue working. I'm keeping our insurance active. Um, Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we have very good insurance. Um, I, I, I can't give people advice. It's, since I'm taking my cues from you, um, I'm not going through the same stresses a lot of caregivers are going through worrying about the life of their partner. Um, I know that Dave is taking care of himself. He has an excellent medical team. And the only concerns are when new things start happening, which is also very infrequent. So how do you take care of yourself? Because there's stress that comes along with this. But I, I, I don't usually go through this stress. One, one thing I do is Dave goes to bed kind of early. He watches TV at night and I stay downstairs and I catch up on my um, social media and stuff. and it's kind of a way for me to unwind from the day and that makes me feel calmer. Okay. <laughs> so this is a, a, a different perspective. I, I want Tony to be in more videos maybe as we go ahead and move forward because life is changing rapidly. Um, I am, again, really hopeful that this clinical trial is going to do some really good. I've been feeling, I keep feeling like these tumors really are shrinking and maybe they'll all just go away. Highly unlikely, but it possible. would be really cool and possible. Again, I still am hoping for that miracle. I don't mind being that miracle person where they don't know how it happened <laughs> as long as it happens. I've actually started picturing myself flying again, which would be really cool if I could get to a point where I could do that. Fingers crossed that this is actually going to work. Um, sending lots of positive affirmations that it's going to work. Uh, I think 
my doctors are really hopeful and um, and uh, so am I. So uh, we'll go from there. When my mom gets here later, uh, I'll do some more video. We'll show you us having fun on coronavirus lockdown night. So, um, and uh, that, that it doesn't have to be all electronics and iPhones and iPads, that we can actually do something. I think I'm, I'm doing it for myself to prove to myself I can, don't have to just be sitting in front of the TV or reading stuff. I'll suggest candlelight and see how that goes over. Oh, we'll see how that works. <laughs> But in any case, we will talk to you later. Thank you. If you're gonna be quarantined, we're gonna do puzzle night.